What's up YouTube? It's No More Rob 4 here. Today going to be going over something a little bit different. Uh, I'm going to be doing a little bit of first aid. Uh, I'm going to be treating actually myself. Got a little bit of a cut on my leg here and I want to make sure it heals properly. Um, I believe it's important, important to have a basic understanding of first aid because you never know what kind of situation may put you uh, may put you in a, in a situation where um, you're injured and for whatever reason you can't get professional medical assistance which obviously I would recommend if possible you know I'm not an EMT or anything so don't take this as professional medical advice this is just basic stuff that you can learn in a basic first aid course or you know even just on the internet you can search around for different tips and things like that uh, you know, and, and you can see here, this isn't a, you know, that serious of an injury. Uh, basically just a scrape to the skin on my foot. Um, it is nasty though. It does not feel very good and obviously I want to make sure it heals as soon as possible so I can get back to making running guns for you guys. But, uh, so some of the basic stuff that you want to have here, uh, or that I have for, for this kind of a basic injury, um, you know, obviously, you know, I, I keep a medical kit in my get home bag. You would want one in your bailout bag, long term survival planning, that sort of stuff like that. You would obviously need to prepare for those contingencies. But for a simple thing like this, um, this is what I have. Uh, so obviously, you know, you're going to want some sterile gauze pads, different sizes for different size wounds. I have some cotton balls here. Uh, some band aids. I just like these ones because they're waterproof. So if you sweat, or anything like that or if you get wet the band-aid's not going to come off. That's important for the foot. Uh, obviously when you're wearing shoes and things like that your feet are going to sweat. So uh, other important things here obviously you're going to need some sort of antibiotic. This is bacitracin which is just a really strong antibiotic. Um, liquid bandage I like just because it kind of you know it, it includes an antiseptic but the thing the reason I like is because it's good for hard to cover areas and the foot is one such area because you know you're going to be moving and things like that you may have shoes on it may make it a little bit more difficult to keep the wound protected so it can heal properly and not keep um, you know the scabs from damaging themselves <coughs> and then obviously I've got some different kind of tape here uh, I've got tape for wrapping I've got reusable tape for holding um, <coughs> gauze or any coverings that you might have over the bandages and then I have two solutions here. Uh, obviously the one that most people are probably familiar with is hydrogen peroxide and betadine uh, or betadine. Some people call it. I'm not really sure what the correct pronunciation is. I don't really care. But um, I'm going to talk a little bit about those. I guess I might as well do it right now. There is a little bit of debate over which of these you should use. Hydrogen peroxide is cytotoxic. Well, so is so is betadine, uh, betadine again, whatever you want to call it. Um, meaning that, yeah, it's going to kill uh, any present infection in a surface wound, such as the one right here. But it is also going to kill some of the good cells that are present in the tissue, which promote um, the healing of the wound, such as fibroblasts and keratinocytes is what I believe they're called. Um, again, this is just from my own research online, but um, what I have discovered and what I've been told by some of my EMT friends and professionals is that hydrogen peroxide was found to be more cytotoxic than, you know, it's, how should I say this, more cytotoxic than beneficial for use as an antiseptic. Um, people just just have kind of come to the conclusion that its cytotoxicity outweighs its bactericidal uh, effects as an antiseptic. So something to consider, you know, for a little cut on your hand, you just want to make sure it's clean. Probably still good to pour it on. I have just heard that this is more effective than the hydrogen peroxide. You know, this is cytotoxic too, and it will kill some of the good cells, but apparently 
the uh, the level of cells that it kills, the good cells, the fibroblasts that I mentioned, um, is less so than the hydrogen peroxide, which is going to help the the wound heal faster. So, just my personal choice. You know, in a situation where you may not have a lot of other products in place, or a lot of other products, a lot of supplies such as antibiotic ointment. You know, if you're far from far from professional medical treatment or in an area that's particularly dirty, maybe not as civilized, things are not as clean, water's dirty, you know, you don't want to kill any more healthy cells than you have to. So that's why I go with this solution for cuts over the hydrogen peroxide. Um, so basically what we're going to do here, anytime you have a wound uh, such as this, obviously again, you know, this is not, um, this didn't just happen, I've had it for about two days. And I have done this already, but basically the first step would be if I had this inju injury, I would want to stop bleeding. Now there really wasn't any major bleeding with this, um, so I really didn't have to do that. So the next step after that, well I guess I should go into a little bit of detail here. Um, for stopping bleeding, obviously you're going to keep pressure on the source of the bleeding and you're going to want to hold that for 20 to 30 minutes. So if I had a lot of blood coming out of here, I would want to put pressure down here with some sort of sterile gauze pad or you know if you don't have that anything you can get your hands on to stop bleeding. Elevation helps if you can keep you know the the source of the the injury uh, the source of the blood elevated um, that will help stop the bleeding because blood won't be able to pump uh, as much to it and you want to hold it in place you don't want to be pulling it off the cloth or the pad, gauze pad every couple seconds to see if it stops bleeding because what's happening is your blood is going to the source of you know wherever the cut is and it's building a net and as the blood tries to flow through the net some of the little cells get stuck in that net and they start to film start to form basically like a mesh and if you remove the gauze before that has really had a you know enough time to to mesh properly over that wound you may rip that open and blood's going to start coming out again so it's important to hold on to the wound until bleeding is stopped 20 to 30 minutes recommended after that what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to clean the wound so you can you know with clean water you can wash it down try to remove any debris that may be in the wound any fuzz or rocks or Anything that may be dirty, you're going to want to try to remove that from the wound. And then that would be the time where you use your antiseptic solution, whatever you choose to use, um, to try to kill any of the small infection that may be present in the cut. After you do that, you're going to want to just maybe wash it off a little bit because sometimes, you know, hydrogen peroxide will say that if you're going to bandage up, the wound um, they recommend that you let it dry first and I believe the same uh, the same is true for this solution uh, you want to let the solution dry on the cut before you bandage it up uh, after you do that you're going to want to put antibiotic ointment on to prevent further infection again that's what I have this for now the, the antibiotic does not make the wound heal faster so putting that on isn't going to immediately cure everything for you, but it is going to stop further infection, which is obviously uh, one of the goals in clearing the wound. After that, you know, you're just going to want to cover it up, and you're not going to want to leave that same piece of gauze or whatever you're using to cover it on there indefinitely. Uh, you want to switch those out once or twice a day or as they get dirty. Obviously, you know, if, if you do get any pussing or anything like that, you want to switch those out because those that gauze becomes dirty. And you don't want to, you know, reintroduce any bacteria into the sites of the wound. Um, basically, that's, that's really all you need to do is just basic first aid video. And now I'm going to go through and actually do all these steps. Well, I've already cleaned it. Uh, so now I'm going to put some of the solution on there, the antiseptic, to clean these wounds out. And I'll go through the rest of the steps.
I think it's a good idea to learn again, you know, how to treat your own injuries because again, you may be in a situation where you have to and it's also good practice because you get immediate feedback over whether or not what you're doing is working. Obviously, you know yourself better than anyone else. So it's a benefit to practice. But little things like this uh, make you prepared if some sort of serious injury happens to you or someone else uh, and you might need to provide first aid attention to them. All right, so, okay, so I've put the Betadine solution on each of the cuts here and I've cleaned it off a little bit. Uh, it is dry, you know, I didn't rub that much down on it. You don't need to use that much. Um, now, because this is on my foot, it is a moving part of me. You know, you want to you wanna make sure that it has a chance to breathe throughout the day. You don't want to keep it slopped up the whole time because it will inhibit the wound to be able to uh, scab up, which is what you want. You want the healing process to you know be able to be able to take place naturally um, you know and it is tough because you may be on the move you know I'm not in any sort of survival situation or anything but obviously if I was and I had an injury I'd be having to move during the day so the nighttime would be the really the only time that it would be uninhibited it would get a chance to breathe if I needed it to so that's something to keep in mind and in my case you know I'm working during the day I'm obviously wearing shoes so um, what I need to do then is I need to protect the wound so that it isn't damaged during the day. It may not be able to breathe right out, so it may not scab as quickly, but I also don't want it to keep ripping, which has been happening on one of the lower parts down here and also right here. So in order to do that, you know, obviously you can use the gauze and the tape and also bandages like these to keep the wound protected from, you know, you don't you want it to always be improving. Even if it's not as fast as you want it to, you want to keep the wound safe from reopening any of the cuts or anything like that so that the wound can heal as fast as possible. Now what I'm going to do, since I'm home from work from the day, I want to let it breathe a little bit. I'm not going to put one of these band-aids on with extra protection or a lot of gauze. I'm actually just going to put some antibiotic ointment on it and then I'm going to spray it with liquid bandage to give it a little bit of breathing. Now, tomorrow morning, when I get ready to go to work, after I shower, I'm going to do the same process. I'm going to clean it again. I'm going to put antibiotics on it. I'm going to spray it with a liquid bandage. And then I'm also going to cover it um, either with a band one of these band-aids or with gauze and then taping that over down onto my foot, which is going to suck because, as you can see, I've got a little bit of leg hair. So um, that's what you have to do, though, because during the course of the day, you know, while I'm moving around and walking and things like that. Uh, it's painful, one, because I'm occasionally tearing these open. Um, and that's, uh, that's not helping with the healing process. So we're going to right now put the antibiotic ointment on. And the way I like to do that, I just have this little sheet here. I just apply it to one of these. And again, you don't need to go overboard with the antibiotics just rub a little bit on to the areas you're trying to protect this will inhibit um, any infections further along down the road which is a good thing also don't want to reuse those I'm going to throw that away then I'm going to use the liquid band-aid. Let me make sure it works here. Yeah, it works all right. And I'm just going to spray that onto the areas that I've cut. And I'm going to wipe it down around the areas I don't need it on.
And that really comes out, doesn't it? And then from this point, I'm just going to let it dry. Sometimes for some larger cuts, you may need to apply a little bit extra of the liquid Band-Aid. Um, I may have to in this area just because this point right here is at a point that gets a lot of movement. Uh, just to make sure that that doesn't break open. And this also does have a little bit of antiseptic in there. You know, a little bit of uh, double coverage isn't going to hurt anyone. But uh, that's basically it. You know, again, I'm going to let this dry here. And I'm just going to let it uh, air out overnight here while I'm resting. And then tomorrow when I go back to work, I will put a little bit more of a protective covering over it with gauze and possibly a Band-Aid to try to protect the wound so it can heal better tomorrow while I'm at work. It's no more op for guys. With a little first aid video for you. Again, I'm not a medical professional, um, but uh, I do believe in self-reliance and having a basic knowledge in first aid is definitely a good thing. And, uh, you know, maybe someday down the road, it's going to come in handy for you. As always, I appreciate any subscriptions, comments, things like that. Stay safe, guys. I'm out of here.